Before starting the video, you need to understand two important concepts, relativity and mass. Relativity is a theory in physics that describes how space and time are interconnected. It was developed by Albert Einstein in the early 20th century, and it describes how objects move through space and time. Relativity explains how gravity works. You may have seen this before, E equals mech squared. You can think of E as energy, M as mass, and C as the speed of light, 300 million meters per second. If you're trying to understand relativity, it's helpful to know what these symbols stand for. The mass of an object is a measure of the amount of matter it contains. Mass is important because it determines how much momentum, the product of velocity and mass, an object has, which in turn determines what force must be applied to accelerate it. This means that if you could travel at the speed of light, your mass would be infinite. And since there's no way for anything to accelerate as fast as light travels, there's no way for anything to travel faster than light speed. Well, after that quick recap we think you can get started with today's video. So, join us because today we will tell you different reasons why traveling at the speed of light is a bad idea. This is interspace. Reason number one. A lot of energy would be needed to accelerate a spaceship up to that speed. The second way to accelerate an object is to use energy to pull it in the direction you want it to go. This is called a gravitational slingshot and is used by NASA's Juno probe, which orbits Jupiter. The spacecraft travels along with its planet at a speed of about 8 km per second and then passes by another planet or moon, such as Uranus, before continuing on its way. The gravity pull from the second body is stronger than Earth's, so this gives Juno enough energy boost that it can escape our solar system and continue on into deep space indefinitely. The downside? Well, there are two downsides. That takes a lot of energy. It would take hundreds of years just to reach light speed using this method alone, but only if we could hold on to that much energy. And remember, even though it takes less time than accelerating with rockets, there's still no way around Einstein's rules on how much power you need when going faster than light speeds, no matter how efficient your engine becomes, there will always be an upper limit on how fast you can go without breaking them altogether, and anything beyond that will require an infinite amount of resources from somewhere else. Which brings me back around full circle again. Reason number two. If we could somehow reach the speed of light, time would slow down so much that we might as well be standing still. If you could somehow reach the speed of light, you would be able to travel back in time. But reaching that velocity is impossible, if you were traveling at the speed of light, time would slow down for you so much that it would become infinitely slow, time stops when an object approaches infinite velocity. This phenomenon is called time dilation and it is a consequence of special relativity. In special relativity, two observers moving at different velocities will see each other's clock running slower than their own, because they're experiencing less time, or their meter stick being shorter, because they're experiencing less distance. The way this works out mathematically is that these effects are equal and opposite. If one person sees another's clock running slower than theirs does, then their own meter stick shrinks by exactly the same amount. This means that if someone could ever travel faster than light, which isn't possible, it would also be impossible for them to have any meaningful interactions with objects in our universe. They'd effectively become invisible. Reason number three, things would get heavier. If you could travel at the speed of light, you'd need a lot more energy to accelerate. That's what happens when gravity increases, it takes more energy to go faster. And if you're moving faster than light, then your mass will increase too, just as it does on Earth. So, if we could actually break through the barrier and achieve this speed, which seems pretty unlikely, it would require an infinite amount of energy just to get up to our target velocity. That means that even if there were an unlimited supply of fuel and power available in your spacecraft, there wouldn't be enough left over for any other activity once you reached maximum velocity. You couldn't use any heaters or air conditioners during this flight, they'd consume too much fuel just keeping themselves running. And since moving through space at such high speeds takes a lot more force than moving around on Earth's. Reason number four. Even if you could use a warp drive to travel at speeds faster than light, the power you'd need to pull it off might destroy you and your ship. It's a question many science fiction fans have wondered about, could we travel faster than light? A warp drive would be the answer, but there are two big problems with trying to build one. First, it would require more energy than the human race could ever produce. Second, even if you did manage to generate enough power for your trip, your ship would need to be made of a material that isn't yet known to exist, and has never been detected. Reason number five. 
you'd need a lot of fuel just to accelerate. Let's take a look at the numbers. The fastest space probe ever sent into space, Helios 2, reached top speeds of 70 km per second before it ran out of fuel and began its descent back to Earth. At that speed, it would take about 15 minutes for you to get from New York City to Boston, and that was without any acceleration. If we were talking about an actual spaceship going on a trip around the galaxy at light speed, getting up to speed would take months, or if you wanted to go even faster than Helios 2 did. And that's just the start. Once you're moving at light speed like this, there will be no turning back, no stopping until your fuel runs out and you come crashing down onto some planet somewhere in our universe. Reason number 6. The trip is going to take a long time, no matter what. Even if you could find a way to travel at the speed of light, it would take you an extremely long time to get anywhere. If you were going to just the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, it would still take around 70,000 years. But let's say that instead of going there, you wanted to head all the way out to our nearest galaxy neighbor, Andromeda, M31. It's about 2.5 million light years away from us right now, but traveling at the speed of light would take about 42 million years for a round trip. Reason number 7. The cosmic microwave background radiation is everywhere, even in interstellar space, and it's really hot. You may have heard of the cosmic microwave background radiation, but do you know where it comes from? To answer this question, we have to go back all the way to before time itself, when there was no such thing as matter or energy, the Big Bang. The universe was just a hot soup of particles and antiparticles in a state of ultra-high energy. Then, something caused these particles to collide together and annihilate each other in a flash, of course. That flash created an immense amount of heat that cooled off into what's now referred to as the cosmic microwave background radiation. After this initial explosion took place, more than 300 million years passed before hydrogen atoms formed from protons and electrons coming together. These hydrogen atoms would eventually form stars and galaxies with lots of other elements that are still floating around today. However, there's one particular element that makes up about 75% of those galaxies' mass, hydrogen. So if you're interested in exploring interstellar space one day, and who isn't, keep in mind that it will be filled with hot H2O molecules instead of cold Colorado 2 ones like here on Earth. Reason number 8. You won't get back to your loved ones in the future. It is a common misconception that if you travel at the speed of light, you are going to arrive in the future. This is not true. When traveling at the speed of light, you will never reach your destination because when you get there, it will already be in the past. To illustrate this point, here's an analogy. Imagine yourself on Earth and a loved one who lives on Mars. You both want to see each other but neither one can get there without superpowers or money. So, you decide to give it a go anyway and fly as fast as possible towards each other until some day, hopefully. You meet at some point along your journeys. Unfortunately for both parties involved, especially if they ever meet, time will pass much slower for them than it does for us here on Earth because their relative speeds are much greater than ours, so even though we might only have been apart for an hour or so surely our friends would have aged significantly more than we did during this time. Reason number 9. You won't break out of our galaxy. You might think that traveling at the speed of light would enable you to break out of our galaxy. You'd be wrong, though. The Milky Way is a disc-shaped collection of stars, gas, and dust that's about 100,000 light-years across, and it isn't going anywhere. In fact, it's not just our galaxy but the entire observable universe that doesn't move relative to us. All those galaxies are simply flying away from ours in all directions at a rate equal to their distance from us divided by their velocity relative to us, the speed of light. This means that no matter how fast you travel through space, relative to Earth, your destination will always remain fixed relative to us here on Earth because we can see everything moving away from us at exactly the same speed. You might be wondering why we even care about such a seemingly theoretical question. After all, who's ever going to travel at the speed of light? But there are many reasons why it's important to understand how the universe works, and one of them is that our understanding of physics can help us make better decisions about how we use energy and resources here on Earth. In addition, scientists are continuing to search for ways in which humans might someday travel through space faster than before. Some believe that traveling at nearly the speed of light may be possible with some kind of warp drive technology, or even by manipulating gravity. Finally, there are also quite a few science fiction stories out there where people or other beings have used time travel as an escape from their own dystopian societies or future worlds gone wrong, and some of these scenarios are based on real physics principles too. 
If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and let us know what you thought about these reasons why it is not worth traveling at the speed of light in the comment box. This was Interspace, see you in the next video.